In this video, we're going to look at how we can graph kinetic data to determine reaction order and to determine the rate constant. So what I've written is the integrated rate laws for the zeroth, first, and second order equations. And we're going to kind of start with these because you can see that each one of these is an equation and we can create a line, a linear equation from it. So we remember a, a linear equation is has a general form of y is equal to mx plus b. So let's take a look at zeroth order because this is kind of the most straightforward one. So we have the concentration of a at time t is equal to minus kt plus a0. So if we were to take a y is equal to mx plus b and overlay this on this, we would get y, which is our a at time t, is equal to the slope times the x value or the independent uh, value, which is time, plus b, which would be the a0. So that's where it would start. So in this case, you can see that with zeroth order, the integrated rate law itself is a line, and this will give you, if we were to plot out A0 versus time, this would give us a straight line. So what we would have is we would have a y-intercept equal to A0, which is our um, B, our y-intercept, and then we would have a line going down with a slope equal to minus k. Uh, and the slope is minus k in this case because if you look, this entire thing right here is equivalent to the slope. So we include the minus and the k in there. So if we wanted to get k, we would take the negative of the slope and that would give us the value for k. So we can see for zeroth order, we get a straight line directly from the uh, kinetic data, directly from the concentration of a versus t. And we can extract out some important things. The y-intercept is going to be a0 and the slope is going to be equal to minus k based on our analysis of the um, of that integrated rate law. Okay, so now let's look at first order. So for first order, if we were to plot this, we are not going to get a straight line. If we just take the ln of a versus t, we're going to get something that looks curved. And you can kind of see that because when we have our y is equal to mx plus b, it's not concentration of A at time T and A0, it's the ln of concentration of A at time T and the ln of concentration at A0. So if we just plot A versus T, we're not gonna get a, um, we're not gonna get a straight line, we're gonna get a curve. And that's because this is an exponential. So in order to make this a straight line, what we would have to plot is we would have to plot the ln of A versus time. And this would give us something that looks similar to the zeroth order. We would get a straight line going down where the y-intercept would be the ln of a0. This would be our uh, y-intercept on the left. Uh, and our line would have a slope equal to minus k. Again, the slope is in there. So this would be our y-intercept, the ln of a0, and our slope would be minus k. So in order to get a straight line out of this one, we would have to plot ln of a versus t. So for zeroth order, a straight line uh, is concentration of a at time, uh, I'm sorry, it's just concentration of a versus t. To get a straight line for the first, for first order, we would have to do the concentration of ln of a versus t. Now let's look at second order. So again, if we look at second order and we do y is equal to mx plus b underneath, um, in this case, again, we're not going to get a, str uh, a straight line out of the concentration of a versus t. We're going to get a curve again, and we're going to get an inverse curve because it's an inverse function. So in this case, in order to get a straight line, what we would need to do is we would need to make our y be 1 over a0. We would have to plot 1 over a0. I'm sorry, not 1 over a0, 1 over a, I apologize. We would have to uh, plot 1 over a versus t in order to get a straight line. Now in this case, what you would get is you would get a line with a positive slope where the y-intercept is 1 over a0. That's our b. And the slope is going to equal k. And you can see that here. This is the slope and this is the y-intercept. So to, to get a straight line out of second order, we have to plot 1 over a versus t. 
So now we have sort of a straightforward way of doing this. What we can do is we can take any kinetic data where we get A versus T. We can plot it as A versus T, ln of A versus T, and 1 over A versus T. And we can look for which one is the straight line. And depending on which one gives us the straight line, we can extract out whether it's 0th, 1st, or 2nd order. Let's look at an example. Okay, so in this example, we have... Uh, the case where we use the graphs and data below to determine the rate law equation including the value of K for the decomposition of NO2 gas. So let's take a look. So there are three plots here. We have a concentration of A versus T, we have a ln of NO2 versus time, and we have a 1 over NO2 versus time. And we see that the only one that's straight is the 1 over NO2 versus time. So this tells us that it's second order. Now, I could not get that just by looking at the stoichiometry. Don't be fooled by that 2 there. This could be second order and not necessarily have a 2 there. So it's important that you don't just look at that, that stoichiometry to uh, come up with that. You have to look at the kinetic data or you have to do a method of initial rates to get that. So for the kinetic data here, we're going to see that it's second order. So let's write down a second order equation for this. So that's going to, that's going to mean that rate is going to equal K times the concentration of NO2 squared. And I put the squared there because I know it's second order from the, uh, the, rate, from the kinetic data graph. And then the question becomes, how do we get the value for the rate constant? Well, in order to get the value for the rate constant, we need to, we need to be able to come up with a, uh, a solution for K using the kinetic data where we have time and we have the concentration of NO2. So if to, to get K, we need to use the integrated rate law. So we have 1 over A at time T is equal to KT plus 1 over A0. And we can get this data, we can get data from, um, we can get the data for this from this chart here. So at time zero, this is going to be equal to the concentration of A0. So we can use that right off the bat. We can take this 1 times 10 to the minus 2 and plug that in for um, our A0. And then we could pick any one of these and use this as our T and our concentration at A at time T. And then, then we have everything we need in order to solve this. So for instance, we could say that 1 over 6.83 times 10 to the minus 3 molar is equal to K times 60 seconds plus 1 over 1 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. And then if we solve for K in that equation, we get 0 0.77 1 over molar seconds. Now, you can do the full unit analysis if you want, but if you remember, we have in our chart that the units for second order should be 1 over molar seconds. So I just know that from that. But if you fully work out the units based on all of the units in this equation, you can get that. Uh, you can get that it's 1 over molar seconds. So that's how you get the K. And then you would just simply plug this K back in up here to calculate, uh, to show the full rate equation with K and NO2. So that's how you use kinetic data to not only determine the rate constant, but I'm sorry, to not only determine the uh, reaction order, but also how to determine the rate constant.